Hello and welcome to FAQ Friday. I'm Brenda Gutierrez with the Sline Area United Way and with me today again we have Jason Tiller. Jason Tiller is our Sline County Health Department Director and our Health Officer. Welcome Jason. Thank you Brenda. So uh, one of the first questions I heard a little about the City Commission meeting talked about and the County Commission talked about Swiss cheese. What, what is this with the Swiss cheese and, and the pandemic and the vaccines? Yep, so when we're talking Swiss cheese, we're not talking about making a Dagwood or anything like that. Um, so the idea comes from uh, the fact that when you layer things, you not only make them stronger, but you reinforce each other. For instance, the military uses it when they talk about layers of defense. Um, football uses it when uh, you know they're, they're playing the game so that if somebody gets past the first round of defenders, there's somebody else to protect the quarterback. Um, so let's take a look at the visual here about what we're talking about when we talk about the Swiss cheese respiratory virus pandemic defense. So there are a lot of things that we have employed and deployed throughout this pandemic to try and deal with this virus. Uh, hand washing, masking, um, isolation and quarantine, uh, vaccination, um, staying home when you're sick, social distancing. Yeah, social distancing. <laughs> right, we're social distance right here. So the principle is, is just like Swiss cheese has some holes in each slice, and so each slice is not going to make, for instance, a perfect barrier, um, but as you add up together slices of Swiss cheese, they start filling in those holes, and then they make a stronger uh, 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 barrier to keep things out. So as you add up these different things that we have been doing all along, um, they create a stronger defense against uh, the disease pandemic in and of itself. Well, yeah, and some of these, as the chart shows us, it shows personal responsibility and then it showed share responsibility. Mm -hmm. And these things that are happening in Salina and Saline County and the surrounding counties in the state of Kansas, when you think about what we're doing personally, the masks, yeah. we can do that. Hand washing, people doing really well, better and better, less of the other things that people have been sick with this last winter yeah. um, for the hand washing. And then and moving forward, the opportunity, what we can do together, um, the very last one closest to the little green person in the visual is vaccines. Uh, but when you look at the first, talking about masks, um, tell us like the, the layers of protection, thinking about what the city is doing and what the county is doing, um, the ordinances and all. Could you mm -hmm. tell us, give us an update on what's going on there? Sure, so one of the things I also wanna mention as we talk about that update and why uh, some of this stuff has been important, that each of these measures, like a slice of Swiss cheese, are not 100% effective at stopping any, anything by themselves. It's when you add these things together, which is where we come to the measures that we have had in place and now talking about the city and the county uh, mass mandates that were in place. Um, so one thing I should probably start with that people need to understand is jurisdictions. So as the health officer, when I would issue a public health order, that would cover everybody, for instance, in the county. It didn't really matter whether you lived in Salina or if you lived in, in Saline County outside the, the city limits of Salina. Um, but that public health order covered the entire area. Um, when we start talking about the county resolution that, the, that was passed uh, last summer and then was recently rescinded, and we're talking about the city ordinance, those particular documents only apply within their jurisdiction. So last week when the county commission uh, repealed their uh, mask resolution, that repealed resolution only applied to the areas outside of the city of Salina because that's their jurisdiction for that. This past week, the city of Salina met and they determined that they needed to wait longer and review it at a later time. And so the mask order still applies within the city of Salina jurisdiction because the city of Salina last summer passed it as a uh, city ordinance. So like many other ordinances or rules, like you know registering your pets and registering your vehicle or other things like that, um, it falls under their jurisdiction, which is why um, it can still be in place even though the county commission had rescinded theirs. Well, when we think about the city commission and the county commission, they do have time at their meeting for public input. So any of the folks, um, when you're watching our FAQ Friday, think about 
why you're for something or why you're against something or if you have questions and then knowing what else is going on in the community. It's not just me individually, my personal. Think about the schools. When you think about public schools and how many teachers and kids and the staff that are affected, when, are, when is their mask ordinance, rules, policy going to change? And then think about the, the colleges in our community. There are some higher education in our community so that we are a community in more than one way. You know, not just Absolutely. by name and not by address and zip code, but how can we all support each other? Support the schools, support the post-education, just all those different layers. And I know that was one of the things that was talked about at the city commission is can we be uniform? Mm -hmm. And also with businesses, because if you wear a mask to one thing and then you don't wear it to the next thing, it gets confusing. And I know they were looking at and talking about how we can keep this consistent when people are in our community. So I think that's important for the city commissioners to know and, and to hear from their constituents what's going on. And, and even if you're outside the city limits of Salina and you're in Saline County, we still want you to be safe. Absolutely. There are so many different things on the Swiss cheese illustration that people can practice to keep those numbers down. And one of the numbers, the hospital, I guess the hospitalizations are staying down. That's always something that's right. a, a concern for folks. Right. So they have, um, we're, we've seen periods, thankfully, very thankfully, we started seeing periods where, you know, for a few days they've had uh, no patients. Oh. And then it'll go up to two or three and then uh, just as in this past Wednesday, they're back down to one. So they're not, they're not done with having patients. However, they still have a significant capacity to be able to deal with anything else right now that, that comes up related to COVID. So if there was some unfortunate outbreak that resulted in more hospitalizations, they're still able to be able to successfully deal with that. Well, and another uh, bit of data that both the city and county looked at were the number of folks that are vaccinated. Right. How, how's that number coming along? And we've had several different clinics and several different places where people can get vaccinated. How are our numbers for Salina, Saline County? Right. So originally when we were looking at the numbers and how we were looking at the percentages, uh, we were looking at a target of trying to get somewhere close to 70 percent of the adults, those 18 and over vaccinated. Um, you know, recently in the last couple of weeks, they have opened up phase five, which is now 16 and 17 year olds. Um, pretty much anybody can get vaccinated. And so um, on our last update for or from KDHE, we are starting to see some 16 and 17 year olds on there. Um, being that Pfizer is the only one that they can get, um, that does create a little bit of a challenge. However, there are some things in, uh, in the works to try and help get some uh, Pfizer into the area so that those that are 16 and 17 can get vaccinated. Long story though is that because we are now seeing those 16 and 17 year olds trying to use a percentage of adults 18 and over is not a valid statistic anymore. Um, so we've had to change that methodology. And so now we're just reporting on what the percentage of the total Saline County population is. Um, now before I get to what that percentage is, also understand that uh, prior to about a week or two ago, we were not able to pull our county specific data from the Kansas uh, Web IZ or immunization system. So we were reporting based off of the numbers of vaccine we had given or the number of people that live and work in Saline County that we had vaccinated. Um, we are now getting that data export back to us um, for all of Saline County regardless of where they got it in the state, which means that uh, there's two things there. One of them is that our numbers were still pretty close as far as how we were counting and then what was getting counted somewhere else um, for the county. Bottom line, we were still really close. And our last update uh, on uh, last Wednesday was that we were at 28% of the total population. Uh, we'll have another update out very soon where we should see some increase in that percentage. Uh, and then we also hope that each week, of course, um, as the demand for vaccine uh, is still there, that we will see that number continue to increase. And you brought about the, um, the younger folks. When you think about 16 and 17 year olds who want to be vaccinated and 16 and 17 year olds, if you're the parent or the guardian, is that something that you're interested in, uh, having your child vaccinated? How will you know how much to ask for, or will that automatically come from the, the vaccination? How much will come to Saline County? How will you know about that? So we were able, uh, before we closed the registry for the JCPenney Clinic, uh, 
we had about 150 or so 16 or 17 year olds that had registered on there. Um, that gives us an idea of where we can start at. Um, so what we're looking at potentially is that we will try to get somewhere in maybe the two to 300 range of doses, and this is still early in the planning, um, to try and get this into the area. Um, and then working with our collaboration partners, be able to have uh, appointments that are available for those 16 and 17 year olds to start scheduling. And we hope that we'll have a lot of these details figured out in the next week or so, and then that we can start putting that information out to the public about where they can find vaccine for their 16 and 17 year olds that wanna get vaccinated, what the process is and how to do that. That also leads me back to um, Vaccine Finder, vaccinefinder.org. So since the uh, registration has closed for the uh, J.C. Penney Clinic, uh, everybody who is looking for a vaccine, whether you are a 16 or 17 year old or you're a 60 or 70 year old, uh, if you're still looking for vaccine, then you need to go to vaccinefinder.org. That information within that website is pulled uh, out of the uh, main database that is keeping track of all of the vaccine, where it is, how many doses there are, et cetera. And so when you go on that website and you put in the zip code for Salina instance, it will tell you what providers in the Salina area are, are giving vaccine, how to contact them, uh, even how to schedule, uh, what types of vaccine they may have, if they have vaccine in stock, or maybe they're out of stock right now. Um, but all of that information is there. Um, if you have questions about whether you should get uh, Pfizer or Moderna um, or just whether you should get vaccinated now, maybe you have a health condition, we still encourage you to contact your primary care provider and discuss that situation with them before you get vaccinated so that you can be comfortable in your decision to do so. Well, when we think about vaccinefinder.org, um, I mentioned some of the colleges. If students want to get their vaccination now before they maybe go home for the summer, mm -hmm. that'd be definitely something to think about. Um, if people have jobs that change from the end of the spring semester um, into the summer, yep. be thinking about, and then that vaccinefinder.org is something they could look at, oh, you know, do I want to get both of my vaccinations back home? or right. where I'm going for my summer internship. So this is a resource that um, is pretty much coast to coast, is that it right? It is, it's, it's a national resource. National? Anywhere okay. you are in the US, it'll, it'll show uh, who has vaccine and where. Um, the other thing to keep in mind that for some people, you know, they think that, well, you know, if I go to this place or I go to that place, I may have to pay for the vaccine. No, there is no cost for the vaccine. It doesn't matter where you go, who you get it from, there is no cost. Now, the provider that gives the vaccine can, uh, using your insurance information, charge your, a small administration fee to your insurance, but there is no out-of-pocket cost to the person getting the vaccine. So anybody that says up front that you need to pay something for the vaccine, um, that is incorrect. So just keep that. Consumer in, beware. Right, consumer beware, absolutely. Yes. Oh, yeah. Well, another one that consumer beware, uh, something that's been in the headlines this last couple of three days, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Unfortunately, uh, yes. What's, what's the interpretation on that and what's the advice on that for Johnson & Johnson? Uh, so as most people probably know at this point, Tuesday morning, the CDC and FDA jointly issued a statement that they, um, under an abundance of caution in their words, recommended that the use of Johnson & Johnson vaccine be paused um, because of six cases of uh, uh, blood clots that have occurred um, in two to two weeks or so after getting the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Um, as soon as we heard that, um, that Tuesday morning, uh, we actually had a Johnson & Johnson vaccine clinic scheduled early that morning. Um, and in our attempt to try and get some interpretation or information from uh, the state health department, we decided that until we knew more information, that's why we canceled that clinic on Tuesday morning. Uh, in consultation with KDHE and then later on that day, the state health department put out the same reinforcing message that uh, under uh, an abundance of caution that the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is paused for the time being. How long that is, we don't know for sure um, until 
they finished studying the um, uh, instances that occurred. Um, so right now we are back to um, just using the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccine. Well, and, and thinking about how to find this information, um, it's, there, it's been really hot and heavy that you've done the newsletters, you've done the press releases. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm guessing things we talked about maybe scaled back a little bit because of the daily updates, there won't be as much to update. And I wouldn't want to read the same information three times in a row. We want to right. catch people's attention to know this is the change for today. Um, so that's going to have a new schedule, is that right, for your uh, daily updates changing? Yeah, so toward the end of the month, as um, things start, I, I hate to use the term slowing down, but In a good as, way. Things, as things start to say yeah. stable out, if you will, or you know, are a little bit more stable, um, and information is not changing daily or every couple of days, um, we are planning to scale back on the number of newsletters and information we put out. Um, we don't want it to become white noise for people. Mm -hmm when we put out the information, we want it to be relevant so that they know that uh, the information, so for instance, oh, new information is being put out, let me make sure I look at it. Not, oh, well they just said the same thing they did yesterday. So we want to avoid that repetition, um, but make sure that what we're putting out is relevant. So we will be looking at a scaled back um, uh, frequency of, of how often we're updating. Well, and we're, we're touching on the consumers, how you keep people interested, what catches people's attention, just as when we look at the Swiss cheese respiratory virus pandemic mm -hmm. defense, thinking about the newsletter, I understand you're looking for a new name for the newsletter. We need some folks that have that creative with words, maybe creative with images for the, right. new, for the newsletters. Right, so if you have some ideas about what the new newsletter could be called, um, then definitely PM us through Facebook um, and let us know what your suggestions are. Um, please keep them clean, knowing that this is something that will have to be in the public. Saline um, County, yes. We yes, are. so, you know, there are, you know, some, some government standards that we have to follow for decency. But, um, yeah, we are looking for suggestions. Um, we don't want to just kind of come up with some dry run-of-the-mill um, uh, update name we want something that people are actually going to um, recognize too so catchy that rolls off yeah. the tongue yeah. yeah think about those advertising names well and there are a lot of other things that are happening in the world and when we think about april uh, there are at least 25 days that are designated <laughs> around health month yeah uh, we we like to highlight on faq friday that you know what, what's going on and we have jason tiller our sling county health department director and health officer here and what is going on this week or what is going on this month and we started looking over it when there are more than 25 things, that was a lot to explain. Yeah. Um, I think we kind of zeroed in on um, stress, thinking about stress and mental health was one of the things for people to be aware of. Yeah, so there's, there is. Um, you know, each month has different observances where they either have a day or a month or a week that observes some sort of health-related topic. Um, April just happens to have a whole lot of them. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if it's because it's spring and things are popping up and it just adds more. Uh, but a few of the ones that were probably uh, a little bit higher important, uh, stress is definitely one of them. Uh, a lot of people have been under a significant amount of stress in the last year or longer. Um, and so, you know, self-care and seeking out uh, help for uh, stressful situations, mental health um, is definitely always something that we encourage. Um, as well as I think alcohol was one of them this year. Um, uh, I'm sure, I haven't seen the statistics, but I'm sure the use of alcohol has probably gone up in this last year, uh, just due to stress and isolation and so forth. Well, at the Sloan Area United Way, one of our goals of, in health is decreasing risky behaviors. Yeah. And there can be you know, anything that can be that addictive behavior, how we can help folks, drug, alcohol, um, self-destruction. There's a lot of different things that are risky behaviors and how we can help people improve their lives or lift lift yourself, lift your family, mm -hmm. lift your community, your coworkers, um, because how we can rally together. Because as a community, what can we do to spread the positive and lift, lift the awareness to show support of all these different health activities that are going on in the community? So thinking about that, thinking about the stress and alcohol awareness, because those are two that had come up. Yeah. Um, and be watching for more on the Swiss cheese respiratory virus pandemic defense. Um, that'll be on the Facebook page and there'll be the image there that you can share and help explain what that is when, when you're talking about it and someone else hasn't heard about that yet. So Jason, I want to tell you thank you again. Thank you for uh, joining us on FAQ Friday. And oh, absolutely. we'll see you again next week. All right, thank you.